Well, the trout fishing opportunities on the eastern shore of Maryland can be few and far between, but a big one just opened up here at Tuckahoe State Park in Caroline County. The Maryland DNR Fisheries crew arrived Tuesday afternoon here at Tuckahoe State Park in Caroline County to deliver 250 beautiful rainbow and brown trout to this spillway just below the lake. When, when a truckload of fish like this go out, especially in the fall, and, and people knowing that they're really nice fish, I mean, uh, it, it, it's you have a lot of pride in the job. Look at the size of that rainbow. One of the benefits of hosting this show is that I get to put in the biggest fish. Is a beautiful brown trout. Look at that. All right, buddy, here we go. Get outdoors, Delmarva. <laughs> now, to go fishing for trout in Maryland, you've got to have your non tidal Maryland fishing license. And to keep the trout, you've got to have your trout stamp. Now, these fish came from a hatchery in Hagerstown. And once they hit the water here on Delmarva, they're ready and legal to be caught. I got to tell you, I spent about 10, 15 minutes here trying to hook up one of these freshly stocked trout right here in the spillway. They don't seem to want to bite tonight, which is great news because it means the first guy who gets here, in this case me, isn't going to catch them all. You should be able to catch some of these trout in this creek for the next few weeks, so good luck. In Caroline County, I'm Mike Parker reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva. Well, here at Assateague Island National Seashore, preparations are underway to make sure the island is in as good a shape as it can be prior to Hurricane Sandy arriving. Meanwhile, local sportsmen are also out and about taking advantage of some last minute opportunities. Well, I spent the morning hunting alongside my friend Chief Ranger Ted Morlock here at Assateague Island National Seashore. Currently, the island is hosting a muzzleloader hunt for both Sika and whitetail deer, which is scheduled to run through next Saturday. But you guessed it, with Hurricane Sandy, its winds and its rain on the way, well, this hunt is being cut short. Sandy's unfortunately going to close the beach here to, tonight, essentially. Uh, we'll have to close it because we expect overwash to begin this afternoon and tonight. And when we get reopened, we're not sure, but it sounds like from the predictions, it's going to be a few days. So, uh, you know, it's muzzleloader season. Uh, they only get a week, and um, it'll be a good chunk of that week is going to be uh, taken up by Sandy. Even though Ted and I weren't successful with the deer here on Assateague this morning, on our way back to the ranger station, we noticed that we weren't alone. Other sportsmen, surf fishermen, were out and about trying to squeeze in some last minute fun. Try to catch some fish before they kick us off. And as we headed back to the check in station, we found that some other deer hunters were successful in squeezing in this last minute hunt. Well, we were going to be here all week, and we got chased out of here by the hurricane. So today's our last day, and we'll head home tomorrow. So not much we could do about the weather. Now, hopefully the island will be able to reopen sometime in the next few days after the storm passes through. And if so, muzzleloader hunters will still get a chance to come out here through the end of this season next Saturday. If not, well, it just means there will be more deer here to harvest during the shotgun season in November and the bonus hunt in January. Reporting from Assateague Island National Seashore in Worcester County, I'm Mike Parker reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva. Anglers are trying to get to the top of the leaderboard at the White Marlin Ocean in Ocean City. That's where we find WBOC's Mike Parker. Mike, some healthy competition going on at the scales there at uh, Harbor Island. <laughs> Yeah, Paul, we've had two fish come in this afternoon so far and two atop the leaderboard. Take a look right now at what is the third biggest tuna in the 39th annual White Marlin Open. Uh, the new leader here caught aboard the Tracy Ann here today out of New Jersey. 229 pounds. Guys, that was the second fish that came in. There was another big eye tuna that came in here about 45 minutes ago that was 238 pounds. So that's the new leader in the tuna division here on day three. To give you uh, some perspective, though, those are big fish, uh, but the biggest tuna ever caught here at the White Marlin Open in 39 years weighed 326 pounds. So add about another 100 pounds onto that fish, and that's what we're talking about for the record. Hey, we have a special guest right now. Joining us right now is the mayor of Ocean City, Maryland, Rick Meehan. Michael. Hey, mayor, how are you? I'm doing great. Hey, great night. i got to imagine. This is an exciting week. The atmosphere is electric. If there's this many people on 14th Street in the Bay, there's got to be a ton of people in Ocean City. There's a lot of people. It's a great crowd here. We've got a run on tuna right now. It looks like 
like they're getting ready to weigh in a white marlin. So big event here at Harbor Island. All right, well, the mayor gave away my, my news here. A boat waiting behind us here. Looks like they've actually got a white marlin on board. It'll be only the second white marlin weighed in. We'll see if it'll meet that 70-pound minimum. The crowd's going wild. Gets down here, weigh-ins through Friday till 9.15 p.m. at Harbor Island. Until then, I'm Mike Parker reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva. All right, Mike, thank you. Well, you might think of New England as prime lobster catching territory, but it's here in Ocean City, Maryland, that a group of lobster fishermen hauled in a pretty rare catch. For the crew of the Potluck, based out of the West Ocean City Harbor, catching thousands of crabs and lobsters each week is standard practice. After all, putting food on your table is how they put food on theirs. Typical week in the spring, summertime, early spring, summertime this time of year. 1,000 pounds of lobster, 6,000 pounds of crabs. That's a, that's a decent haul. So while out at sea earlier this week, there he is. finding this in one of their pots, uh, blue lobster, had them clawing for words. People should see them. They don't know. They, we don't, they don't even know that we catch lobster here in Maryland. A genetic pigment mutation thought to occur in only one out of every two million lobsters. Amazingly, Captain John Gorley and mate Tim Alinskis have seen such a catch before, about nine years ago, as they recall. But that blue lobster didn't survive long after a long journey home in a holding tank with thousands of its typical red and brown colored counterparts. Ah, here we are. Transporting the little guy. Boy, his tail's getting weak. Blue lobster. Holy cow! <laughs> We're gonna go stick him in the tank. I've never seen a blue one. So this time around, this male American lobster lifted from the Washington Canyon more than 100 miles off the coast of Ocean City is being treated wow. with care and with special instructions. Hey, don't sell this guy, okay? So sure, that holding tank at the seafood house across the harbor is fine for now, but what are the long-term plans for Ocean City, Maryland's newest, most famous crustacean? Well, some of the guys aboard the potluck say maybe hook up with an aquarium and put them on display. Others say a return trip to the Atlantic where he came from might be more appropriate. Reporting from West Ocean City, Worcester County, I'm Mike Parker reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva. I find myself here on a farm property in Worcester County, Maryland, uh, in the Shawl area. And for those of you who aren't exactly familiar with it, we're here off Route 589, just a stone's throw away from Ocean Pines, maybe a mile or so down the road. So we're in a pretty mixed rural and residential area. Well, I got a phone call from my buddy Gene Garrett, a local fur trapper who you'll remember from episodes past when we went out in search of species like raccoons and foxes. But this time around, Gene is here for something a little bit different. He's been keeping an eye on things out here after the property owner expressed concerns about some nuisance animals running around. It's a species that's not even native to Maryland, but one that's gaining a pretty solid foothold here on Delmarva. When you do a Google search for coyote, you get the whole kit and caboodle of information, from pretty pictures in the snow, to a wealth of scientific facts, to news reports with shocking headlines. A dog is snatched up and carried away. A dog in Dartmouth was attacked by a coyote during a family cookout. For some reason, the simple mention of this wild canine species draws a visceral reaction from most, especially when you learn that they're probably not far from your own backyard. So that's why I'm here and uh, we get lucky enough to get one this morning. So, you know, we'll see what it looks like. This looks like a, a young male, um, typical, typical coyote. When the owner of this large farm first told Gene that he'd spotted some coyotes in recent weeks, Gene was interested in going after a new species. But as a trapper used to turning hides into cash on the fur market, he was also a bit apprehensive. I thought, well, I'd rather do it in the fall when the furs are good, but he says it's a nuisance. They're, having, they're concerned with their pets and stuff like that. And I said, all right, I'll, I'll come over and get them. Because right now, you know, he's, he's no good as far as the fur value. You know, but he is a nuisance. And he is the fifth coyote he's trapped this week. 15 years ago, you never heard of a groundhog in the area, Harley, and now you're starting to see coyotes, and you know, they're here to stay, and we're gonna, we're gonna have a problem with them, I think. This is the most I've uh, heard of caught here on the lower part of shore in any one season, especially in one week. 
uh, five in, in one week is unbelievable here on the, the shore for, for coyotes right now. We've had coyotes on the shore since the confirmed on the lower eastern shore of Virginia since the early to mid 80s. So a lot of times people think they must have come down uh, from West Virginia, Pennsylvania into the shore when actually they could have gone, gone both ways. They could have come across the Chesapeake Bay or the mouth of Chesapeake Bay during the late 70s when we had freeze ups. In other words, wherever they came across, the eastern coyote is one of the most adaptive species you'll ever come across. In their average lifespan of four years in the wild, the coyote will typically mate for life and females will bear four to eight pups each spring. And contrary to popular belief, the eastern coyote doesn't typically form a pack. So as each new litter of pups matures, young coyotes waste little time seeking out new territory, expanding their footprint into places like Delmarva. Still a, still a beautiful animal. Uh, teeth, are they any? Okay. The, uh, this looks like a young animal. The teeth are nice and sharp, they're not worn. Left unchecked, coyotes like this one could slowly displace our native foxes, with the larger coyote holding the upper hand and competing for the same prey, mostly rabbits and small rodents. But the adaptive coyote, at ease in a suburban setting, could also be a threat to pets, like cats and small dogs. And while unlikely to take down a mature deer, they can impact whitetail populations by preying on fawns. Get ready to set a trap here for a coyote, hopefully. It's a little bit different trap than most of them. It's called Montgomery, it has a different uh, way you set them, a little bit different. It sets a little bit lower, the pan sets a little lower than the jaws. So I want to tighten it up a little bit because you don't want to give him very much room to uh, lunge. So I cut down his, on his lunging by about two to three inches. The more lunge they have, the more chances of them getting away. Lure down in there to get his attention. It's very potent, punch it. Most of them have been caught on this. I don't have any, they make one for coyotes, but you know, that's something new to the area, so I'm just getting started. And since this has done so well, I might just continue with that. While Maryland's true trapping season for coyotes happens in the winter, when furs are full and thick, nuisance control is legal by permit all year round, as is the shooting of coyotes 24-7, 365 by licensed hunters. And while the owner of this Worcester County property should sleep easier with Gene on the prowl, it's likely that so is the next coyote, already making its mark on Maryland's eastern shore.